How to Make Meditation Joyful by the Venerable Renzo. You can make the place where you meditate a simple paradise with one flower, one stick of incense, one candle. In the past, people liked to light candles. Candles were considered very good at that time. Nowadays, people no longer have the same feeling about lighting candles. If we were to go back 200 years, candles were considered a good thing. People at that time thought they were very good as they brought light and evoked great joy. Can you imagine the feeling of lighting candles from 200 years ago? At that time, having a candle or an oil lamp would be regarded as wonderful as it brought light. If you light a candle or an oil lamp during a power outage, you would feel wonderful as it brings light. However, now that there are electric lights available, you may find candles less appealing due to the smoke which may dirty the room. You may not like kerosene lamps either, finding them dirty. Therefore, nowadays, it's better to use electric lights to make offerings to Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. We must offer the best kind of brightness to the images of Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. When we use such lights to make offerings to the Buddha, it's certainly better. They emit light, are clean and bright, with various colours, creating a different feeling. The person who invented the light bulb has accumulated immense merits. They must be in a bright heaven now, eternally enjoying the brightness. You can make the place where you meditate a simple paradise with your favourite flower, one stick of incense, one lamp, one photograph of an enlightened master or one statue of a deity or a Buddha. You can transform the most ordinary of rooms into an intimate sacred space, into an environment where every day you come to the meeting with your true self with all the joy and happy ceremony of one old friend greeting another. True self is not false self, not self-consciousness, not self-attachment. Instead, it's about releasing your self-attachment and touching your true mind joyfully and happily. Don't wear masks. Remove all your masks completely. Eradicate your self-attachment. There are many methods to achieve that. And if you find that meditation does not come easily in your city room, be inventive and go out into nature. Nature is always an unfailing fountain of inspiration. To calm your mind, go for a walk at dawn in the park or watch the dew on a rose in the garden. The dewdrops are crystal clear which might inspire your wisdom instantly. Lie on the ground and gaze up into the sky and let your mind expand into its spaciousness. For those narrow-minded, you can go to the rooftop and look at the sky. When you are in a low mood, looking at the sky and pondering which star might have aliens may help dispel your vexations. You can imagine, if a UFO were to appear now and take me somewhere for a trip, wouldn't that be wonderful? Let the sky outside awake a sky inside your mind. Stand by a stream and mingle your mind with its rushing. Become one with its ceaseless sound. Sit by a waterfall and let its healing laughter purify your spirit. However, when some people come to the waterfall, they can't hear laughter, but rather crying. So, it's determined by your mind. When you are in a good mood, you may perceive it as laughter. Whereas, for some people, it becomes sobbing, 
when they see the waterfall like tears, they start crying. Walk on a beach and take the sea wind full and sweet against your face. This circumstance can also ignite your inspiration of meditation. As long as you maintain mindfulness and introspection, these states can all inspire your mindfulness. Celebrate and use the beauty of moonlight to poise your mind. Seeing the serene moonlight, your mind will also become serene. Sit by a lake or in a garden and breathe quietly. All of these can help inspire our spiritual practice.